also sometimes referred to as Modern Sunday, falls on the fourth Sunday in Lent, exactly three weeks before Easter Day. It is a celebration honoring the mothers of the family, as well as motherhood, maternal bonds, and the influence of mothers in society. It is celebrated on various days in many parts of the world. No matter where you are in the world, there is a day to celebrate mothers. While it might not be on the same day around the universe, there is a universal appreciation for mothers everywhere. The seed for Mother's Day that we celebrate today had its beginning in 1858 with Anne-Maria Ruiz Jarvis, a Christian lady who was working to heal the nation after the Civil War. Her strategy was to promote and elevate the important role of mothers and help them to create healthier and more hygienic homes. From this, she instigated a Mother's Friendship Day which eventually developed into a national movement called Mother's Friendship Clubs. At this club, Anne would teach the mothers basic nursing and safe sanitation practices to be used in the home, which she had learned from her brother, who was a famous MD. This resulted in many lives being saved, and by offering this service to both sides of those involved in the civil war, it was instrumental in facilitating the reconciliation process between union and neighbors. When Anne Maria passed away after a long illness, one of her two daughters, Anna, decided to dedicate her life to her mother's dream of a Mother's Day to honor all mothers around the world. Anna missed her mother greatly and felt children often neglect to appreciate their mother enough why the mother was still alive. As a Sunday school teacher for 20 years at her church, she was very aware of the fifth commandment, honor your father and mother, and no doubt would have taught this to her students. She shared her desire to bring to fruition her mother's dream, and it was readily accepted by her friends. The first of such service was held at her church, and she handed out her mother's favorite flower the white carnation. Mothers are the embodiment of eternal love and devotion. Qualities of a Christian mother. Quality one, possesses a keen sense of discernment. The discerning heart seeks knowledge, Proverbs 15, 14. A good Christian mother stays intimately connected with God so that she will keep a discerning heart she is willing to grow in knowledge through the reading of God's Word and absorbing truth from mature godly mothers. God grants her the sentiment in the lives of her children so that they may be specifically well trained in righteousness. Quality 2. Persist in prayer at all times. They should always pray and not give up. Luke 18, 1. A believing mother never gives up on her children, especially her prodigals. People will write off a difficult, rebellious child, but not a praying mother. She will plead the grace and mercy of God over their lives as long as there is breath in her body. This mother is compelled and encouraged by the Holy Spirit to keep praying no matter what. Quality 3 demonstrates unconditional love. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. 1 John 4, 18. A mother who loves God with all her heart isn't afraid to unconditionally love her children. She recognizes that her patience will be tried by disobedience, but it will never cause her love to regress in anger. Her love sports confidence in her offspring since they never worry about loss of love due to bad behavior. Quality 4. Cultivate a joyful environment. In your presence is fullness of joy. Psalm 16, 11. Those who enter into the home of a godly mother sense the presence of joy. 
Her deep-rooted joy sustains her through difficulties of living in an ungodly world. She has mastered the ability to encourage her children towards joy in every situation. Quality 5. Exhibit steadfastness in the word of God. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. Psalm 111 verse 10. She meditates on the Holy Scriptures regularly. The Christian mother actively engages the Word of God for every problem in the home. She meditates on the Holy Scriptures regularly, as well as speaking and teaching them to her children. Her family witnesses her diligence and learns from her example to apply God's teachings to their everyday lives. Quality 6 forgives the offenses of others willingly. If you forgive anyone's sin, their sins are forgiven. John 20, 23. Offenses will come from within and outside of her home, yet the godly mother won't hold forgiveness hostage until she feels better. Rather, she chooses to forgive immediately and trust the Holy Spirit to heal her heart her family recognizes this principle in her and practices forgiving others as a way of life. Quality 7 embraces a spirit of contentment. But godliness with contentment is great gain. 1 Timothy 6 verse 6 A godly mother receives the urge to be discontented with her surroundings. Children or husband. She recognizes that the chasing of worldliness and riches will never bring her peace. Instead, she trusts in the Lord to provide all her needs and grant her desires according to His will. Quality 8. Trust in God. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Psalm 9 verse 10. Her trust in God is most evident during the difficult seasons of her life. The Christian mother is tempted, like other believers, to doubt the Lord's hand over her life. Yet, she remains steadfast in His ability to take care of her and her family needs. She establishes a trust relationship with God and grows every day. Quality 9. Keeps the faith. A faithful person will be richly blessed. Proverbs 28, 20. Her faith will most certainly be tested in her roles of wife and mother. A godly mother will accept the trying of her faith so she can grow in perseverance. She demonstrates her faithfulness as she continues to mature in her relationship with God and others. Quality 10 brings other to chaos. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Proverbs 31, 27. The Christian mother is marked for her diligence and resistance to laziness or soulfulness. Her chief concern isn't the perfect home, but rather a healthy home full of love, laughter, and order. She keeps her home free not only from physical clutter, but watches for the spiritual and emotional clutter of worldliness. Quality 11. Hold to what is right. The writers will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Matthew 13, 43. As a godly mother, she makes the tough decisions that run against the torrents of societal corruption of children and youth. She sticks to what is right in the eyes of God for her children's spiritual, emotional, and physical well-being. A Christian mother expects resistance and refuses to comprise righteousness for acceptance. Quality 12. Willing to release her children to God. Hope does not disappoint. Romans 5.5 5. Why the Christian mother holds her children tightly around her heart she releases them to grow in Christ at their own pace. She's entrusted her prayers to God to protect and lead them in the direction of His will. 
Her influence and persuasion centers around the Lord's will more than her personal preference for their future. There is no such thing as the perfect mother, but the Christian mother continues to be perfected by the grace of God. She is invaluable to the kingdom of Christ due to her influence on the next generation. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, every godly mother is a blessing to her children and children's children. Here are some Christian mothers that possess such qualities in our churches today. Congratulations to all our fervent mothers in Jesus' name. Your devotion to your husbands, your children, your family, the church and extension the society at large is highly commended and appreciated. The Lord whom you are devoted to will richly reward you and bless you indeed in Jesus' name. The theme for this year's Modern Sunday for us in the Diocese of Lokoja is fervent in spirit serving the Lord taken from Romans chapter 12 verse 11. This day is celebrated on the fourth Sunday of the season of Lent. And Lent reminds us of Jesus' fasting and temptation. Though Jesus was tempted, he knew no sin. He did not succumb to temptation. And we just uh, realized that Jesus, who knew no sin, was made sin for us so that we might experience the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. This year's World Day of Prayer, which is usually on the first Friday in March, came just the Friday before the Modern Sunday week. And to us, it is very significant and a wake-up call to prayer and a resolve to pray preserve God's creation. The church celebrates mothers on this day. I would just look at the importance of motherhood in God's creation. God made humans as the pinnacle of his creation. In his image, God created them, male and female, he created them. With this commission to be fruitful, and replenish the earth. Motherhood is a means of procreation and fruitfulness. According to Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 and 28. To be fervent means to show a dogged devotion. God requires a mother to be fruitful requires a mother to love and this love emanates from God. It is love according to God's standard as recorded in John chapter 15. We are expected to love even as Jesus himself has loved us. He gave himself for us he gave his all for us. It's an unconditional love. Even as he has loved us, he expects us to love one another. It is we, we are expected to be faithful, to be women of faith, like Eunice and Lois, who passed on the faith to the generation after them. They passed on their faith to Timothy. A woman is expected to be prayerful. A mother is expected to be prayerful. Rebecca sought the face of God. She needed to know what kind of children she was carrying in Genesis 25-26. She didn't seek the face of man. She didn't seek the face of other gods. She sought the face of the living God. And God answered her. A mother is expected to be hard-working. Proverbs 31, 
a woman describes that requirement. Motherhood is also symbolized by giving. Anna, the mother of Samuel, was a giver. She gave her all. She gave her best. She gave back to God that which God gave to her. The mother is expected to be compassionate. The Bible says, can a mother forget the child she had born? A mother is a teacher, like the Proverbs 31 mother. He said, the thing that his mother, the king, Lem Lemuel's mother, the king, the things his mother taught him. So a mother is a teacher. The father instructs, but the mother teaches such instruction, breaks it down little by little, so that the child understands. The mother is a nurse, is a friend. The mother is an advisor, like Naomi advised Ruth. The mother is expected to be fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. These are the qualities that God expects of a mother. And how can this qualities be attained. Proverbs 31, 31 says, Beauty is deceitful, but a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. I pray that God will make us fervent, devoted to Him, dogged in our devotion to Him, that we will be resolute to serve the Lord wholeheartedly, committed, dedicated devotion not just for our sake, but also for the generation after, all. after us. I wish us all happy Mothering Sunday. The Lord bless you. And Savior Jesus Christ. Happy Mothering Sunday to all our wonderful, amiable, and beautiful women all over the world. We thank God for motherhood, which is a gift. We thank God for what God is doing in the lives of mother. We want to thank God for making us mothers. And we want to say that we're proud to be mothers. We want to thank God for giving us children and husbands. And we know that the place of a woman is an important role and an important place in the family. Just like the woman in Proverbs 31, 10 to 31, we saw that she was a virtuous woman. She was a manager, she was a seamstress, she was a farmer, she was a housewife, she was a homemaker. We can see examples in the Bible of women who stood in their generation, just like Esther. In Esther 4.16, she stood up for her people and she said, if I perish, I perish. She stood in the gap and saved the whole nation. And we know that most of our women are fighting and struggling and keeping the family together, keeping the church, keeping the society and the whole world. And we want to say, mothers, we love you. We appreciate your words. We know what you're doing in the world and we pray that the almighty god will keep you today beyond and give you good health and give you long life in the name of jesus we know that as women we have callings calling upon our lives to take care of our children of our husbands to stand in the gap for the family to be there for the church to be there for the community for the society and the world at large and i pray this day that the strength to fulfill the calling of god upon our lives that the Lord will give to us in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to on this special day congratulate our Mama Nigeria, the President, Mothers Union and Women's Guild, our Amiabu mother, Mrs. Nkasiubi Oko, on this special day. We want to appreciate your work and your work in Church of Nigeria. We pray that the Lord Almighty will continually strengthen you and Baba to take us to greater heights and greater grounds in the name of Jesus. We pray that the Lord will give you long life and good health and give you wisdom in this work that he has called you unto, in the name of Jesus. Once more, I want to greet the uh, dean, Mrs. Mary Lamido, the dean's wife. I want to congratulate you on this special day. I pray that the Lord Almighty will make your children to rise up and call you blessed, in the name of Jesus. In the same vein, I want to congratulate all our archbishops' wives and all the bishops' wives on this special day. Thank God that the Lord has made us women. We pray that in our different areas of calling, that the Lord Almighty will make us to prosper, to progress, 
and to take all our women to the promised land in the name of Jesus. Women are a symbol of joy, of happiness. They are there to face challenges. They are there to provide hospitality. They are there to be able to take in pains and suffering and patience. Today, I want to tell us as mothers, never be discouraged. No matter what you're going through, know that you have a God. You have Jesus that loves you, that gives you love, and will never disappoint you. We pray on this day that you shall celebrate many more modern Sundays in good health in the name of Jesus. And we pray that your children shall surely call you blessed and that you will be a blessing to this generation. You will be a blessing to the whole world in the name of Jesus. So once more, we want to say congratulations. We love you, beautiful mothers. The Lord will keep you for us and that indeed we shall eat the fruit of our labors in Jesus' name. Thank you all and God bless you. The essence of this rally is the beginning of the activities of the Mothering Sunday, the day that was set aside for women, mothers all over the world. And for us in the Anglican Diocese of Joss, we decided to celebrate it this way, crying out for the children. The violence that is meted against children is what women and other girls have gone out to tell the world that that should be stopped because these children are the future of our country, the future of the world, in fact. What women are showing on the posters is just what we have. What is my call? That sexual abuse, physical abuse, all the things that are not right, that children should not experience, should be stopped. <laughs> One of the things that is disturbing the women is the violence against them and the children. So we decided that we'll come out and rally and cry to the public and to our families to end violence against children and women. Well, for me, in the Anglican Communion, especially the Anglican Diocese of Just, the pace has been set by our president whereby girls are to be protected. That is for real. From the inception of her ministry, she understood her call. Women and girls are to be protected. For the president, is a thing that when you go to Nyango girl, she move ahead even with the boys. So for the Anglican Diocese of Just, the presidents have been set by Dr. Mrs. Gloria Kwashi. And so for us, girls must be protected. And that is why she has pulled her women. And for us in Just Diocese, we will be doing different activities. Saturday is going to be greater than today. We are going to look at Proverbs chapter 31. So the woman who has born a king must be a woman of good character herself. She must have seen other women of good character and she has also seen other women of unnoble or disnoble character. I know that I am speaking for you that we are demanding that the girls who are being taken away daily, it is daily, it's not just the number that you see and hear about. Daily, people are being taken away. And I've been wondering, why girls? God will scatter their plans in Jesus' name. Whatever God has invested in a woman, especially in a virgin, that the world has noticed and the world is stealing from God, God will fight our battles for us. So the education of the girl child is very, very important. A girl is natural, she's a natural teacher. By our lives, See what King Lemuel was saying, wonderful things. It was from his mother. So a woman has that endowment. So the girl child should be trained. A girl also is a natural caregiver. For that reason, they need, all every investment needs to be put on somebody who is naturally a caregiver. 
on the next table, the president. This is the, the president of the Move to Rest the Archdeacon. Well, the next table she's reaching is the Rest of the Beautifully said. You see, your match is not like your own. Let's see this 2016 match. and green. Our are possible. We thank you for being part of this parade and thank you for me. If you don't know about the match, this match. President, this is from Arachidi Kiri. Rock of Arachidi Kiri, we're proud to have you. Proud to have you, Girls Guild. Rotia Arachidi Kiri, Mama. We are blessed, girls. The Mama is beautiful, says the President. She's proud of you. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the men's fellowship. Anglican Diocese of John, the Queen is here. Thank you very much. Oh, she just know what to do. Please let's clap for the Queen. Thank you so much. She is a God bless you. Thank you, Commandant. The Brigade are doing the in and out. But God has kept us, God has placed us here. So I just want to urge everybody out there to know that we should always respect our mothers. To our daddies, I must say that God has put a scepter in your hand as a scepter of authority. But use it justly. Don't use it harshly. Use it reverently. Mothers have been encouraged to look after their husbands and their children, to be submissive in all things. Bears a child. She will carry that child for nine months. She will go to the pains in the labor room. And when she is done from the pains in the labor room, 
she gave birth to you and I. As mothers, as wives, as children of God, we're following his steps. We ought to do things that will bring the light of God for others to see. Those who do not know him, they will be able to see the light of Christ in us and as well follow the path. God saw a need for a help meet in the life of the man and he decided and he created a woman to help the man. So also, we cannot neglect and we cannot overemphasize the need of a mother in the home, in the society as a whole. Jesus, as an individual, 
I couldn't imagine 1,001 things that could be going on in Mary's mind at that particular moment. Seeing her son, he who knows no sin, being crucified like a criminal on the cross. That inner powerful touch could only be felt by Mary to Jesus. The power of the mother's touch is a magnet. While Mary was at the foot of the cross, the power of a mother's touch speak without uttering a word. The unexpected happened when Jesus says, Woman, behold your son. Then to the disciple, behold your mother. The power of a mother's touch in time of need. The power of a mother's touch. Can we say there's power in a mother's touch in this dispensation now? When the mother is there, the father of the world will relax. Your mother is around. Your mother is around. Your mother is around. We want to go back to that. We are the mother is seen as offering solutions. To every problem in the family, the poor Christ. We are the mother connects others to Christ, like the mother of Jesus at that wedding in Cana of Galilee. You can see that in John chapter 2, verse 3, they have no one. Connection. They have no one. Also, we are the mother in Queen Lickers. Strive to show others that we is best. So the son, we have no one. Mother's touch is powerful to change mood and meditation. Medication. Sitting beside that sick child is powerful to heal any disease. Can I see that one too? In 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 22, when Anna told the husband, let me stay away from home. We will pay time for this one that we should be the Lord has given It allays every fear, brings relief to physical, spiritual, and emotional problems. Let your mother have the solution to this problem. When my wife is around, I know that the solution to this. As we celebrate another Mother's Day this year, my prayer to all mothers in the world is to know and accept Christ and the power of His resurrection, so that any time He comes in His glory, we shall not be fought once. Amen. I wish you many of these celebrations of the land of the living. If Jesus Christ carries His coming. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this beautiful day you have let us to see. We thank you for the sleep you gave us in the night. We thank you for your children, for our mothers, for our fathers. Father Lord, we thank you for the children you have given to us. Father Lord, may they be a blessing to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, as we speak your word, enable it to come with power, and may all glory, honor, dominion, and majesty be yours in the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we always do that? Who is a mother? A mother is a symbol of life and love, God's gift for man's need, a loving companion, a reliable person, a soothing presence, an inspirer of hope, an embodiment of patience, and a peacemaker. However, as we are all aware, we cannot be mothers. We can't become mothers without fathers. So, we thank you, fathers, for being with us. 
for helping us, for helping us be mothers and mothers indeed, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Today, our topic says child parenting in times like this. Um, uh, this uh, from First Samuel, the Old Testament, chapter 1, reading from verse 20 to 28. And the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 2, reading from verse 41 to 52. I don't have much time. I have been warned. So I will just go into what I have very, very fast. And we we'll get on with the remaining part of our mothers watching something.
with the much needed dollars of our standards. Well, I think our Nigeria is a better place to work and live in. As a result of this migration to Europe, without the requisite visa, most of our children and youth have lost their lives in the desert. Most have had to undergo things they never expected. Most of them are even slaves. Yes, they left their father the shores of Nigeria to go to Libya and so on to work as slaves. Especially our girls who have been turned into sex slaves. Please let us talk to our children so that they stay here with us, learn how to be Nigerians, work in Nigeria, and work for Nigeria. Even in religious states like the priesthood in the African community, most of our youths don't want to come into the priesthood in the African community. They would rather prefer to go to Pentecostal churches where the prosperity doctrine holds sway. And of course, in the space of three years, they will be made bishop. I don't know what attracts people in the term or the word bishop. For what to become a bishop, according to the Bible, it commands a lot of discipline. We have to be disciplined. It's not just somebody who enters a car, moves from one place to another, and um, who says all kinds of things. We have to be mindful of uh, looking at things and reminding the wrong things which shouldn't be the case. Some of our parents are in the habit of helping their children to pass exams. You heard when the money uh, people said it during the Bible study. This is not right. If we want to move higher in life, if we want to do everything that is good, we have to make sure that we take our children through the narrow and straight path. If we feel they are not intelligent enough, we make sure we hire lesson teachers who will teach them to pass these exams to the glory of God. Now, what are the demands of the time on our parents? Our parents must know that Jesus, they must know Jesus. They must accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. Because without having Christ and serving as a parent, I tell you it is an uphill task. At the point in time, you will wonder why it is that the children are not obeying your come here, sit down, read your book, and uh, wash clothes, and so 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 and so so. The children don't just feel like moving. I had it cross in my own time. I crossed me when I was very young. I had a lot of energy. Not now. Then, what I will do is I will teach them sleep. Of course, in the absence of them. You know, if their father were to be around with this, what is it? Why are you beating them? Why is this? Why is that? You know, a good child is the father's school. But the Bible always says the Lord's school. Isn't that so? Even the Bible says so. So whenever the father is not around, then I will give it to them. But um, when the last one came along, you know, they went up together and they accused me. They said, eh, mommy, you no longer, I mean, you don't treat him a bit the way you treat them. Look at the way she's doing. And the day I tried beating the baby, I almost broke the bone. <laughs> so we must have Christ in our lives. We must accept Him as our Lord and Savior. We have to go into the world of God. Read it. Go upon God in and out of season to talk to our children because we on our own cannot train this to without God's help. Now we as parents, we have to be vigilant because we have to watch these children every time as they contact different parts of the world and different people at will through the phones we have given to them for communication and we are not aware of it. 
they must be able to see what they are doing and be able to correct them and commit them into prayers. In this case, family altar is recommended. We shouldn't be in a hurry to get up early in the mornings and wash up the work. We should make it a habit. If we cannot make it a habit, we will tell God to help us to make it a habit. To always get up early, read His word, commit everybody and all what we have to do for that day into His hands, before stepping out of the door to meet the people. It is a must for all of us. And as we do this, may God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. In spite of the different philosophies about morals, parents must be found with our youngsters. Because Black City brings nothing from disaster. We have a saying in the Bible that says, Share the God and spoil the child. We must also learn to forgive. There was a situation that came up in my school about this child who was transferred only to the school. Before you could say that God is sick, he had made contacts. People, when they see him, he looks like an Ajaboka. So, um, his fellow students thought, this is a new student. His parents are rich. Let's go and get him. He's a new student. And so they went. And they befriended this young boy. Before you say that God is he had got a girlfriend. Two, three minutes later, a very bad boy now became his friend. This bad boy has now wrote him in to become a fellow cultist. The boy has the only thing in him to know where they make juju. Juju to get money without his parents' knowledge. Juju so that the um, soldiers in school will not see him and punish him. And so many other things. And how did the mother come to know about it? She came to know because she is a prayerful woman. She just signed his phone one day, was just looking at it. They didn't know how to open it because he had not ever known. So the other children now told her, this is what you do, don't do like this. You see him doing like this. So do like this. So when the mother did like that, the phone opened. And she was able to go through the various conversations and so on and so forth. She was by spinning her head off. What happened? She called the boy, up to me, the boy no longer comes to her. Finally, she had to take up the case to the father, and the father beat process with the boy's work. On the long run, with prayers, the process with school authorities, we have been able to drive this young man out of the grasp of the new project on the wall. Praise the Lord. It shows that we have to be watchful, we have to be prayerful about whatever it is happening nowadays. We have to learn to forgive these children when they do whatever it is against us. That is why they are called children. And that is why we are parents. You know, becoming a parent is not easy. Their life is fast, fast. And when it comes to their own turn, they say, ah, no me. So you have to undergo all these things. I say, yes, my Niki. You know, those days when I was telling you, don't do this, do this and do that. You thought I was, you thought I didn't like you. You even thought I was not your mother. Now, it is your own time to go through what I went through. Ah, the girl said, ma, I can now see that I need God as my help. So let us try to forgive them and pray along with them when they fall into diverse streets. Remember, Ephesians 6, 4 says, and you fathers, because our fathers will not be fathers, and you fathers, 
do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Our papas are not only talking to our brothers and the same parents. Our papas, we want you to always meet us during the morning devotion. You know why we think us during the morning devotion? That hope is forever blessed. Eh? We are not saying anything.
your word has said that I shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. As you raise up these our children in times like this, they will return all honor, all glory, all dominion to you in the mighty name of Jesus.